Today we cover the difference in energy performance of different styles of install for the windows in an exterior wall. Starting from a more traditional uh, nail flange install like it is showing in this uh, picture, we have the uh, exterior wall, the left hand side is the outside, the right hand side is the inside. We have the header that is the part of the framing that supports the weight of the wall above. And then underneath we have the um, window frame and the glass unit. We, because we work exclusively with passive house project, we started off with a triple pane uh, glass, although you don't always need triple pane in passive house, especially in climate zone two or three. Uh, but anyway, we wanted to look at the performance of this type of install for the purpose of expanding our textbook. And uh, we started off with a wall with two by six framing without any exterior insulation. This is what the isotherm view looks like. And you see that the isotherms are pretty straight in the wall section above. Uh, and then they are pretty straight also at the very bottom uh, in the glass unit. And in between all this swiggling here becomes problematic because the more the isotherms swing left and right, the more of a heat loss to the outside we have. Specifically, we see as we zoom closer that in this case, we have the um, nail flange that is this upside down T uh, that is used to, to mechanically fasten the frame of the window to the framing of the wall. And in this case, we, we model an aluminum nail flange, meaning that aluminum is very good at causing heat losses. And so this allows a lot of heat escaping to escape to the outside. In fact, this is what it looks like. This is the direction that the heat follows in escaping to the outside. And the closer to purple or red we have in the color of the arrows, the higher the intensity of this heat flow. You see that this, um, this upside down T that is the nail flange comes in basically in between the window frame and the wall rough opening. And this allows a lot of heat to escape. So that is pretty bad. Uh, and if we start adding exterior insulation on this, it doesn't get too much better. Let me just switch uh, a little bit. Need to do some live changes here. But you see that the heat flow is still pretty bad and the isotherms looks still pretty bad even if we start adding insulation and even if we add more insulation to the outside we go to three inches exterior insulation uh, we go to four and a half inches exterior insulation it doesn't really matter because the uh, nail flange is not covered with insulation and actually in this case the um, uh, head flashing detail that we have model in this case with uh, 20 gauge uh, stainless steel actually brings the cold up. This is the, you follow my course, so this is the head flashing that we consider 20 gauge, so pretty thin, and stainless steel, so it's the least conductive of the, of the metal option that we have. But you see that the, it still carries a lot of heat to the outside, and the stainless steel flashing collects the heat from underneath the exterior insulation and let it escape to the outside. So uh, this is not really good in terms of install. You lose a lot of R value that you buy. You buy a high performance window. This is a, an R9 window and you actually get an R4 installed because of this issue. Now in the second part of this video, we're gonna cover the uh, other options, uh, p uh, vinyl flange as well as flange less type of install to see how that improves the performance. Looking at the same detail, we have just switched the material the nail flange is made of. So zooming closer, we have just changed the material this upside down T is made of. We started off with aluminum and now we have switched to vinyl. And that makes a big difference in terms of uh, performance. You see that the isotherms go a lot straighter. I'm going to pull up the isotherms that we had earlier when we had the aluminum um, nail, um, nailing flange. This is what they look like. You see 
how much the aluminum causes a thermal breach. So back to the vinyl nail flange, you see the isotherms are more straight, there's less left and right switches. It is still pretty um, unstraight, so to speak. We want these isotherms at the wall, at the top, to be lined up with the isotherms at the bottom. And you see that if the this is just a 2 by 6 wall construction, so we have 5.5 inch of insulation on top, and this glass unit is not lined up with that. If we start adding exterior insulation, in this case we go to inch and a half, we go to 3 inches, 4 inches and a half, and 6 inches, you see that this now is a lot more lined up. Uh, the center of the insulation at the top is more lined up with the center of the insulation underneath. And that is great. That is one of the big things that we need to address when we design high-performance diesels like this one. What we have not changed yet in this detail is uh, the type of head flashing. We started off with the, um, with the 20 gauge uh, stainless steel. You can still see here. And when it comes to looking at the direction of the heat flow, it still looks pretty bad. I'm gonna switch to this, this is the same view. You see how much the, st the 20 gauge is pretty thin and it's stainless steel, so it's not very conductive, but it still acts as a highway for the heat to escape to the outside. That is why we, uh, whenever, whenever we have a detail like this, we, we spec a non-metallic, um, flashing detail. Flashing is super important, uh, but so it is the energy performance. And once we switch to a flange less, uh, sorry, once we switch to a non-metallic uh, type of type of um, flashing, then uh, that problem goes away. I'm going to do switching something here. There we go. You see that we no longer have, we did not model the, this is like a tape or a self-adhered membrane. So we did not model that actually in the model because it doesn't really have thermal conductivity. As third option for this detail, we have a flange less install where the uh, window frame does not have a flange and the fasteners actually screw through the frame into the framing of the rough opening. In this case, uh, the model, as always, does not show the exterior finish of the wall. The outside is to the left. The right-hand side is where the interior of the building is. This is your drywall where the cursor is. This brown is the sheeting. We do not show a rain screen or uh, any type of WLB because with exterior ventilation in the rain screen cavity, they don't actually, uh, materials outside of that don't actually contribute to the overall our value of the wall. Um, anyway, so this is a detail that we spec often where we the exterior face of the um, window frame is lined up with the exterior face of the sheeting. This makes it uh, a very solid drainage plane as it also makes it very easy to, for flashing uh, from the sur uh, surface of the um, sheeting to the surface of the frame. It also makes it very easy to then add insulation on the exterior and, and over the window frame. But let's start with the azotherms, uh, azotherm view. You see that the window is no longer to the outside. Um, what we had earlier was this situation where the nail flange, uh, with the, uh, the nail flange installed, pushes the window to the outside. It does cause a little bit of a uh, ledger for water, so that is why you need a head flashing detail. Um, you, you also need in, in the other one, but it's less important. Um, but once we, we switch to flange less, then um, you see it's a lot more lined up and it becomes immediately better for the isotherms because they, they start going uh, more straight. And it is even like that once we start adding insulation to the exterior, starting with an inch and a half. In this case, we have uh, a two by uh, extended over the frame to, to carry the finish. This is the exterior finish. Um, so it's not really insulation that comes uh, over the frame yet. 
because it's not thick enough, we just have the chew by. But this already starts looking better for the isotherms because we now have more isotherms to the left, which pushes um, the body center of the insulation at the top more lined up with the glass unit underneath. And, and the more we add insulation to the exterior, the more we can see this. Um, this is with three inches, this is with four inches, and this is with six inches of exterior continuous insulation. The install detail would look like, sorry about that, looks like this, where you have a two by that we frame, probably with fasteners through the insulation here, to carry the insulation inside the finish here. And this, even if you have a little bit more wood here to support this corner, is not the end of the world, because big picture, now your isotherms are more to the exterior and your glass unit is more centered um, over the isotherms of the, of the wall above. Um, this is what the heat flow looks like, and you don't really have much of a bypass uh, that you would have instead with uh, a nail flange installed. Uh, if we want to compare it with the uh, worst condition that we model is the aluminum nail flange with the stainless steel head flashing detail. That can show us uh, how differently the uh, heat flow occurs in the junction because this is a pretty weak spot um, of the insulation. Uh, of the yeah, of the thermal envelope in general. So by insulating over the frame, you prevent that. So to compare it with the aluminum, um, aluminum flange with the stainless steel, it looks like this. Um, and you see there's a lot more stuff going on here. There's a lot more heat flow bypassing the window frame uh, because of the metal, the aluminum of the nail flange, uh, and the stainless steel of the head flashing. So just to switch back to the middle of the wall insulation, you see how much less heat flow occurs around the frame. 